Natalie with you again for the second installation of our Silly Virtual Walks. So first off, just wanted to say a really big thank you to everyone who tuned into the first video and again to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on that video. It's really good to hear what you guys thought of it and some of those routes that you might like to see. So hopefully over the coming weeks, we'll be able to work through a few of those and give you guys that little silly hit right there in your homes. So today it's actually quite sunny here and the wind's dropped down a little bit. So I'm taking a little wander out to Watermill Cove and I'm gonna take you around the coastal path now. But just before we go anywhere too far, the little track that I'm in at the moment is uh, really lovely. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of that first. So I'm gonna keep quiet for a minute cause there's a really lovely sound just of gentle running water and some nice bird song for you. Really lovely view across the St Martins there, so just on the far left you can see the day mark. And then out to its right there are the Eastern Isles. And furthest on the right there is one of the Eastern Isles called Menowethan. So we're just coming up above Watermill Cove now, which I'll show you in just a second. It's just off to my left here. Now Watermill Cove is a historic anchorage and it forms part of the Isles of Scilly AONB. So that stands for Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. And the whole of the Isles of Scilly is an AONB and it's actually the UK's smallest area of outstanding natural beauty. So those areas basically get designated because of their really high value in terms of their landscape and their value for nature and wildlife. And when you're able to take a look at them, it's really easy to see why. Now these really are some of the best days. So if you look really closely over that way, actually make out the mainland just behind Menowethan there. So just walking along the path here and there's some lovely three-cornered leek. So it's very similar to wild garlic. Just across to the right there of Watermill Cove, you can make out Tregear's Porth, and there's the remains of the slipway there, but that is still in use for some passing boats. really really beautifully clear today so just uh, off center there you can see round island with the lighthouse on and as i pointed out in the previous video so to the left of it is st helens and to the right is tian and then this beautiful island here is st martin's and out across to the east niles In the distance there, 28 miles off the mainland. 
So I'm just going to take you now up to the top of Tolls Hill because it's got a really beautiful panoramic view across the islands. Now, whilst I'm up here, I just want to show you a really awesome little plant called Tormentil. Now, Tormentil historically has actually been used to treat wounds, inflammation, gum disease, colic. It's even been used to make toothpaste and to make schnapps. So it's a very versatile little plant. So you can see it's got these beautiful little yellow flowers. They're quite similar in appearance to buttercups, but the difference is that Tormentil has four petals and buttercups have five. And also whilst I'm up here, I can't not mention our very conveniently placed donation post. So when it's safe to come back and everyone's able to visit again, and you're next up here, feel free to pop us a couple of pennies just in there. So here we are, top of Tolls Hill. gannet just flying low over the water there. Now these really are amazing divers. And they can actually keep the same speed when they enter the water. They can go under, swallow a fish and come back up again all in one swift movement. So what I'm going to do now is just walk you down the hill onto beautiful Palistri Beach and across to Tolls Island. Not gonna lie, the sun is out, it's absolutely beautiful, and I'm getting pretty hot in this jacket, but you know, I've got to rep the team. Trying desperately not to fall over. Just looking back towards the Eastern Isles there, which is where the majority of our Atlantic grey seals are found between there and the Western Rocks off of St Agnes. Now, as it's low tide, we're going to walk across onto Tolls Island so I can give you a little bit of a better view. So just walking across the beach and I've actually spotted a little bit of rope, which I'm going to pick up take home. Now some of you may have heard of the concept of a two minute beach clean. It is literally what it says on the tin. So you just spend two minutes down at your local beach picking up pieces of litter and just take them home with you. If you don't live near the beach it's really not a big deal. You can still get involved. So actually 80% of the litter that ends up in our seas starts off inland. So it'll work its way down through river courses, it'll be blown into the sea by the wind. So even if you're going out and clearing your local park whilst you're out on your daily walk, that's a really good way to try and help do your bit to help protect our seas from that wave of plastic pollution that they are facing a lot of today. So you might have to bear with me whilst I work out the best way to clamber up onto Tolls Island without breaking an ankle. And to think that you guys wanted me to start off with the rope swing. Can't even clamber over some rocks without risking falling over. But I'm up and I'm on and I only stacked it once. So let's go and have a little explore. So Tolls Island, as I mentioned before, it's accessible at low tide and you can literally just walk across from Palistri Beach. But if you are doing that, whenever your next visit is able to be, once this pandemic is over, make sure you check in the tide times, make sure you've got plenty of time to get across and back. Thank you. 
pretty windy up here but just in the bottom left there you can see a little oyster catcher resting on top of the rock and behind him there you're looking across to St Martin's with the day mark on on the far left in the back and again towards the eastern isles on your right what I couldn't see from up the top there is that there's actually two of them down there now these guys, these little waders, they will pick along the shoreline for their food. And there's actually been some evidence to suggest that there might be varying shapes in their beaks depending on whereabouts on the shoreline that they feed in terms of the, the diet that they are going for, basically. Now, just to finish off, I'm going to walk you up to that high point on the other end of the island. So I think that view across to the off islands is a lovely view to leave you guys on today. Uh, but thank you very much again to all of you for tuning in. Let us know what you think in the comments. And those of you that did comment before on those routes that you'd like to see, I have written those down on a list. So I'm going to try and see what I can do for you guys in the coming weeks. But thank you very much and uh, I'll see you next time.